Good evening. Welcome back to this second segment of the Glazov Gang. And we are honored and privileged to have three titans with us this evening. Dwight Schultz, Anne-Marie Morell, and Alfonso mm. Rachel. I'm a titan. <laughs> Let's take care of a, little, a few in-house matters before we move forward. Reagan Morell has disappeared. Yes. Uh, why did she disappear, Anne-Marie? She was tired of being held. She was being held against her will. Okay. She like that. Now, because the dog is gone, please, each of you, if you don't mind, a, an imitation oh of a dog barking, because you did it between the break, and I think it was really good. Dwight, let me see. Excellent. That sounded like a dog that's getting really eaten. Good. No, that's excellent. No, <laughs> okay, <laughs> Anne Marie, who do you yes. think did it the best? I kind of like this. I know this is weird. I kind of like. I kind of like Dwight's. No offense. Uh, okay, excellent. Yeah. Now we're always uh, <laughs> seeing who would be a great always actor, good. actress on the show. Now we've done a little bit of more research into the past of each guest. Anne Marie, I'm sorry to pick on you, but we found out oh, no. that you are afraid of balloons. Is How? this true? Man, I cannot say. Anything around here. <laughs> <laughs> Is this true? It's true. What? I'm not afraid of anything else. I will, I'm not afraid of snakes or bugs or anything. I will jump out of a plane, but I do not like balloons. They are, twist, they are making a twisty balloon monster for you oh, outside right now. terrifying. You are going to get it. I don't like them. But wouldn't you suck a lot of helium in if you had a balloon? Wouldn't you do that? No. I'm not afraid of the silver ones. <laughs> so that, those don't bother me. Was it mylar? Silver the mylar, mylar, yeah, the mylar ones. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Kind of makes you talk like that. You wouldn't be able to do that. We should all do that here on the uh, show. We'll just play it in fast motion or right. something like that. And there are a lot of neuroses <laughs> and dysfunctionalities on the Glass Off Gang. But now we will return to the serious issues of our time. Mm. An incredible uh, phenomena we have at hand, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think Political uh, named it right the other day in, in a title in one of their stories. Obama the Puppet Master. Mm. Uh, he's just brilliantly conducting the media in the sense that, hey, I'm playing golf, don't come here. Oh, mm -hmm. don't ask this question. Oh, we'll tell you on Facebook or Twitter or something. I thought people so weren't allowed to come when he goes ski shooting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something is happening here. Uh, this is unprecedented yeah. on many levels. Does it worry the members of the Glazov gang? Why don't we st start with Anne Marie this time? I think he is brilliant. And I, I agree, he is a puppet master. He is playing America like a, a, like a piano. He's brilliant at what he does. No one has ever done this before. He, he knows how to use social media. He knows how to use um, TV, The View, and David Letterman. I think he's, he's really smart. He knows how to reach the people in a way that, that our side does not know how to do. I mean, I hate it, but He's good at it. You, may I, I, can I venture to say, and I, I, I said this when I started doing my pieces on uh, MySpace back in 2007. I, I warned, I said, do not let Obama get, uh, uh, be elected president because there's a plan to this. Basically, what it's, it's going to work like this. Obama's going to get elected president, and the socialist elitists are going to filter their ideas through him. Mm -hmm. He's not the puppet master. He's the puppet. He's the figurehead. Mm -hmm. And they're going to promote their agenda through him. And if you challenge him on it, you're going to be called a racist. So he's, he's succeeding in pushing all these things through no matter what you say against it. It, it has nothing to do with racism whatsoever. But that's the tool that they're going to use to, to, to pound the right wing with. They're, that's what they're going to do. So all this stuff that he's trying to place through, you challenge him on it, you're going to be called a racist. And we've seen it happen all day long. I find it very interesting that the, the, the radical left that criticizes Obama from the left, like Michael Moore did lately, they're not called racists <laughs> for criticizing not. Obama from the left. For some yeah. reason, it's only the conservatives mm -hmm. that are called racists. Well, but well that's because, I mean, I, I, I mentioned this uh, when we were having our huddle. <laughs> <laughs> the huddle is a secret. The huddle cuddle. Cuddle huddle. Um, the huddle uh, is Mike a Allen and Van de Hey, uh, two ex-Washington uh, Post hacks, uh, are frauds. They're, they, they simply are liars. Uh, this whole thing about we're being you know, the puppet masters, using his strings and manipulating us is a load. <laughs> it stinks to high heaven. They are willing accomplices for 
everything he is doing. And they write this article expecting stupid people to buy it. it is, it's a cover. They are all, they love what he is doing. And, and it's oh, yeah. e exactly what Zoe said. It, it, it was, this is an interesting thing. Uh, when uh, two cycles ago, uh, George Soros was everywhere. He was right in the front seat everywhere. He's the man who said the United States is the chief impediment to world peace. He's the financier. He's the guy, the big uh, world socialist who's behind all of this stuff. Uh, he was not visible during the election of Obama when he ran. He was missing because he learned a lesson. If he was there, oh, he's connected. He was sitting there when he, with Hillary and everyone else. This, this whole thing is, is a setup. It's, it's all exactly as, mm -hmm. as Zoe said. Mm -hmm. This was planned, and, it is, and it, the plan is running out right now. Mm -hmm. It's just running exactly as they want it, and Republicans haven't figured it out. We won't even criticize him. Yeah. And what's the good news? <laughs> <laughs> the good news is events occur and people make mistakes. Mm -hmm. They have always made mm -hmm. mistakes. Mm -hmm. They always have. But in many respects, I fear, I mean, I think that the role of the media is almost criminal. Uh, it is. Stage, yes. Even it over is. Benghazi, nothing's mm -hmm. being That's right. asked. Right. Uh, we've got Huma Abedin at the right-hand side of uh, Hillary Clinton. You're not even mm -hmm. asked to ask, allowed to ask a question or anything. Uh, last words on uh, o Obama, the puppet master, maybe something Dwight said before we move forward. Mm -hmm. Anne Marie or well, with, 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 as far as the media goes, well, they they don't just have a president to uh, protect; they've got an agenda to protect. Yeah. You know, so they, they they have their own reputations to protect. Um, it, Obama's going to be able to do certain things, and and what we're seeing before us is is a miserable failure. But once again, these are people who elected Obama. His his constituencies, the media got behind him. To admit that he's failing is an admission of failure of themselves, and. Right. You really think you're going to get that out of them? Hmm. Nope. I think it's yeah. interesting, too, that, that one of the last interviews that Obama did with the New York Times was in 2010. That he, started, he stopped doing interviews with those guys around that time. That was around the time that all of us figured out and started calling it the mainstream media. And, and started, we finally saw who was behind the curtain. Hmm. It was nobody. It was, it was evil. And that was when readership went down in print publications and everything started slipping. I think that a lot of this has to do, the reason why he didn't do more interviews with them is because he realized that, that we knew that we were on to him, that we were on to them and whatever they said, we weren't going to believe anymore and had to go a different direction. Look at the radicals that he's appointed. I mean, yeah. and, and no one, I mean, think about this, John Holdren who said that the United States must lower its standard of living um, uh, so that the rest of the world may raise its standard of living. Mm. Mm. Who, who has been his closest advice? He's never appeared on a morning program. No, no one. And no one ever questions him. Uh, he, he, he wrote with Paul Ehrlich. Uh, he's, every single prediction he ever made has come to, has not come to pass. He's a total, complete failure, and yet he's never had to answer a question ever because mm -hmm. this media doesn't care. Yep. And that's why Kerry's going to give a speech about global warming. It's being brought back by John Holdren, and you're, you'll notice that they're not talking about the seven thousand regulations that Cass Sunstein was responsible for that have just been thrown out there uh, that America's going to have to deal with. This is a manipulation and a destruction of our society from inside. Mm -hmm. Scary times, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And so let's move on then uh, to this. Chuck Hagel, nominated for. Uh, Secretary of Defense. We've got Kerry who, you know, hates America, hates the military. He's Secretary of State. We've got John Brennan, mm. who thinks she had is going to the store and going to the gym on time, uh, at the least, uh, is now CIA um, nominee. Um, what do we think of all this? Talk a little bit about Hagel, Brennan, um, Kerry, and how frightening this is and what you think may happen. Well, when you, when you say that they're anti-American and anti-military, that's hero talk to the left, though. Right. I mean, yeah. it, as far as the left is concerned, America's got its comeuppance. America still has this due to pay. Um, it doesn't matter to them that America is giving far more to the world than it's taken. 
It doesn't matter to them that, that America is, has long since redeemed itself from, from its atrocities like slavery and stuff like that. They're always going to use those sorts of things to pull on people's heart, heartstrings because that's either ratings or votes for them. Okay. Anne-Marie, with, with Hegel and uh, Kerry and Brennan on your mind, how do you, how do you see? It's pretty much everyone in the White House right now, though. It, it's the fact that there are six people with direct Muslim Brother ties in the White House. It's every appointment that they've been making, every, everything about it is, is, it's not like the regular Democrats versus Republicans yeah. anymore. This is a whole different ballgame. Yeah, this is the this radical is left that has taken over. It's the progressive the, party. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and uh, the Hegel thing, I mean, Hegel said, I I'm not going to make policy. I'm just going to do what the president tells me to do, mm -hmm. which is exactly why he has appointed him. And, and if you follow the order of things, Hegel should, in fact, be, should get appointed. But I think I heard Larry Elder say, on the radio and he was dead. He said, elections have consequences. Mm -hmm. And the American people have elected a, an international socialist and a, and a, a neo-Marxist, only they weren't told that and he didn't tell anybody that. So there's a great deal of dishonesty here and the media, as you said, is criminally negligent. Mm -hmm. And But we don't have Republicans, at least not now, who are willing to stand up and tell the truth. But when they do, they're crucified. They can be crucified. Mm -hmm. Take cruises. But yes, yeah. but still, you need mm -hmm. a, a concerted effort on the part of Republicans to tell the truth about, yeah. this, about this man. And they can do it, but they don't have the result. Well, one place where the truth is not coming out, of course, is, as we know, with Huma Abedin, mm -hmm. uh, the Muslim Brotherhood penetration of the Obama administration, uh, the whole way the Obama administration has facilitated and fertilized the coming to power of the Muslim Brotherhood in, in mm -hmm. Egypt and throughout the Middle East. And we have something else going on with CARE here at home. Uh, this supposed civil, uh, supposed Muslim civil rights organization. Uh, the director of Hamas Link Cares Missouri chapter, Faizan Saeed, mm -hmm. uh, the other day was uh, uh, expressing how he wants Sharia punishments for those who publish anti-Islamic and anti-Muslim content on the internet. In other, in other words, uh, Care is actually pushing for Islamic blasphemy laws and Sharia, etc., on our of territory. Course. Nothing on Anderson Cooper. Nothing on <laughs> Pierce Morgan. Nothing on the front times of the New York. Uh, nothing on the front page of the New York Times, Washington Post. What's going on here? This and, is and, Missouri. Uh, <laughs> who, who would have known? Now, see, I'll be I'll be seen as ridiculous for 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 suggesting that you know we can look forward to a, a possible constitutional amendment to implement Sharia law. <laughs> is, I mean, I, I don't no. think I don't think it's that ridiculous. You know, it, it can happen. Um, and it's what they want. Yeah, we're going to end up with a cultural. I mean, I, I hate to be a pessimist here, but yeah, it's it's not far fetched to see that we can end up being a culture of total intolerance, ushered in by the culture of so-called tolerance. Mm -hmm. wow. This is what they're inviting in. This is what they're doing to us. This is, this is going to come to pass because they think that it's fair. And they don't understand that everything that they want that's so-called fair is very unfair. Everything that they do, it's totally unfair to try to make something fair for somebody else. And it's, right. it's, it ends up being very detrimental. And this is the way our civilization is committing suicide. Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually have ideologies uh, now manipulating our tolerance to destroy our tolerance. Mm -hmm. Anne well, Marie? I think that they got in. You like that line? That's, that, was yeah, that's, that, was really that summed it up right there. <laughs> yeah. Is that in Indeed. your book? United in Hate? <laughs> now, let's take the time to talk about that for a minute. Why did you bring these books? Well, I do, I do want to say one thing, though, well, go ahead. Okay. About, about CARE. I, I think that they got in through the crack in America's facade of political correctness. Mm. As soon as they saw in the, around the 60s that we all of a sudden we, we were all about tolerance and, and we were accepting anything and let it all hang out, they saw this is how we can get in now. This, now, if, if, now we can use prejudice and we can use mm. words like intolerance to get in there. I think that they were really smart they, to come here. Yeah, they're but. masters, masters with language. And, and yeah. uh, uh, oh, uh, I'm uh, sorry, just wait one second. Okay, go ahead. We just I was going to say, even, even with, um, they're, they're talking about uh, Israel becoming a, an apartheid state. Hegel, right? You know, Hegel. so we got Hegel they're talking about apartheid state. That is, is, is an attempt to throw people off the scent of the rotten history of the Democrat Party. Mm. Because Absolutely. the Democrat Party itself was an apartheid party. 
They were the ones who enacted segregation in America. They're the ones who wanted the military segregated. They wanted schools segregated. This is all the Democrat Party. Excellent point. I'm sorry. We just have two minutes left. Anne-Marie, very quickly, you brought two books. Why don't you mention the other book? <laughs> this is a really good book, okay. but oh my gosh. Tell them about this book. This book? By Mark? Mark Levin. Levin. Mark Levin. Oh, sorry. My, yeah. This This book. Wow. Change Liberty and tyranny. Liberty and tyranny. I have to show you. <laughs> I've got yeah. it. Lots of notes in, in her every, in that book, but no notes book. in my book. So I, if you I, like United and Hate, but Levine's book is a bit better, correct? Well, she, hasn't, she hasn't finished this, this yet, book, though. Okay. I haven't finished this. I'm sure it's brilliant, but... That one uh, is really good. Dwight, Liberty and <laughs> thank you so much, Henry. <laughs> Last words go to you, Dwight. Uh, the, the one thing about care, what they, 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 they use our strength, freedom of religion, mm. uh, against us yeah. and and they, they are using that particular freedom uh to wear political pants at all times and mm -hmm. take off their religious shirt when they don't want it put mm -hmm. it back on and when they have it on they know that we won't out of political correctness attack them mm -hmm. yeah thank you so much it was a pleasure mm -hmm. and a privilege to be with the best glass off gang yet mm -hmm. Dwight Schultz, Anne Marie Morell, and Alfonso Rachel, thank you very much. Thank and you. Alfonso, we end with your thoughts on your experience on the Glasoff game. <laughs> good time. Uh, you guys made me feel right at home. You know, it's, it was good. I'm always really nervous when I do these panels, but uh, yeah, I guess uh, I, I'll, I'll be able to sleep easy tonight. And we'll see you <laughs> next week on the Glasoff game.